Can I ask you guys a question? Because I don't know the answer to this. Let's hear it. What is squirting? Is it just peeing? I really don't know. I no, I don't. I don't know either. I I've think heard it's like a, the ultimate orgasm. I've heard that it's just peeing, but I don't think so. I think it. I think it. Because it I, like spurts out. And I think that it's. I think okay. it's uh, one all of right, those. All right. I'm gonna pause there. It does not just splurt out. Because I've been with a squirter. It is the entire time. Ugh. The entire time? The Okay, I think there must be two kinds of squirting. Like a car wash. It, it's literally like a car wash. I was drenched. It was not pleasing. What is this, like, water pressure? Like. Yeah, no, it was just like, well, yeah, it was just wasn't fun. This is like a super soaker. Like, the more you pump, the more it... it Pressure builds up, and kind then of, it's the more like it streams out. It's just kind of like a hose. Was she dehydrated at the end? <laughs> <laughs> it must have been. Did you be know. like, hey, you need some squirt after this? It, you need some Pedialyte? <laughs> there, must be, there must be two different kinds. Sponsored. Because one must be like yeah. a, the ultimate orgasm, and the other kind just means like this just happens every time. Hmm. Yeah, it's definitely so – I, I don't think it's something that you can just be like, okay, I've decided I'm going to squirt today. It has to be something that, like, you just are that person that you do. Ooh, I feel like – I don't think it's every, voluntary. I feel like everyone has it in them. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. I don't know about I that. I feel like you just haven't reached that ultimate climax yet. Wait, are you saying everybody, like, guys too? Oh, no, well, That's I mean, called a guys, <laughs> Yeah, okay. I feel yeah, like yeah, guys yeah. squirt every time. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, yeah, good point, yeah. good point. But I'm, s- I'm thinking that girls have it in them. Maybe they have to. Maybe they've reached that spot, but in a different spot. Hmm. Maybe it's like a lack of sexual shame, because you know, like I feel like a lot I of sex is tainted with shame. I just, yeah. I so just maybe it's just like she's expressing herself by uncontrolled pissing. I feel like it's a pissing. trait you have. I genuinely <laughs> uncontrolled do. Uncontrolled pissing. I feel like you either are a squirter or you're not a squirter. Yeah, I feel like it. It's it. You either are, or you aren't. I don't think that everyone has it. I just personally don't. But I don't. Who, what do I know? I don't know. Oh, you guys probably have a better opinion than I do. You got. No, the I part. have no idea. You guys I got the no parts. Idea. I don't have the parts. Uh, brass knuckles. But oh no cap, way! It's a cat face. Wait, What's like it, it pops like a bottle cap off? Uh, no, it's for if someone is following you, you can stab them. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, look how simple it is. It's just a little cat face, and your fingers go in its eyes, and its ears is what could potentially take somebody's eye out, or you could go for the jugular. But You're morbid. This is a very simple product, and I think they're making a lot of money off this. There are a lot of girls who have like pepper spray, tasers, just yeah. like attached to their keychain. This key is chain. a cat, so it's cute, but. And y- you're not <laughs> actually gonna like mace yourself either. Right. It's it's very intentional if you're going to use it. <laughs> Do you know how I know about Maddie Smokes? How's that? Cody Co. Yeah, Cody Co. Of right. course, yeah. of course. <laughs> That's how I found out about. I it. love that video. That's one of my favorite Cody Co. videos of all time. I'm a huge Cody Co. fan. Maddie Smokes. Um, same here, like Cody Co and Noel are two of my favorites. And so, uh, whenever Maddie responded to me, I was freaking the fuck out. Cause I was like, holy shit. Uh, and so then I flew out to Canada and did that. Really? Interview with him. Yeah. It was, so he's um, based out of Canada, mm-hmm, Vancouver. Oh, if like, if you listen to the Maddie smokes episode, you can tell the, they have Canadian accents for sure. Really? I listened and I couldn't tell. Super Canadian. Meditations about becoming, well, becoming one with yourself, but more of discovering yourself, discovering your thoughts and discovering where they come from and what you may want to do with them, which dreams are important, too. They can also tie into that. When you meditate before you go to sleep, you tend to dream more often. Really? Yeah. Or do you just recall it more? Perhaps. Maybe it's both at the same time. Because when you're meditating, you're lowering your brain waves into where your subconscious can more easily communicate to your conscious self. Mm. And there, in between the conscious and subconscious is like your sub-self, your animal sub-self. It like kind of filters out what it doesn't want to get reach your conscious self, so only a handful of thoughts from the subconscious reach the conscious. So as you meditate and get deeper into meditation, you kind of thin out that, that filter and you become closer with your subconscious. Mm. And you can find more of why you think that way or more of what you really want. 
because you can have all these crazy thoughts all day long and you hold on to one or another and you won't ever actually find what you're trying to do with these thoughts. So there's always an intention behind every thought. It's more about uh, just being a more a better version of yourself. More self-aware. Yeah, definitely more, more self-aware. Almost like more self-aware, more intentional. Yes. It's almost, it, it, if you want to think about it this way, it's mm-hmm. almost like becoming more human in like a really bizarre way. Because, I mean, what separates us from animals? Self-awareness. Mm-hmm. I mean. Thumbs. <laughs> Thumbs, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That was funny. I was holding up one thong already. There you go. Yeah, yeah already halfway there. <laughs> but I mean, like, I mean, obviously the the neocortex as a whole, prefrontal cortex, like these are going to be the things. But what does that really possess? Like conceptual thought, being like analytical reasoning, being able to think of hypothetical, I guess, not realities, but hypothetical scenarios playing out before we actually decide to take action in towards those because we're able to kind of like almost build mental avatars into like into something before we decide to dive into it ourselves and sometimes you're able to reason that that approach to something out before you actually give it a try yourself yeah you kind of create your own little plan and try to take all the variables that you can into account into getting the solution you want which again goes back to the law of of uh, attraction you're trying to attract that solution and you're trying to plan out your actions mm. and it of course begins with the thought the intention to create that solution through action meditation is about finding that you can use creative visualization with meditation to achieve those solutions i think i, I think i'd just be i think it's it would be appropriate to go into any experience of somebody reading you or anything with a bit like at least a dose of skepticism but not all skepticism like a balance of skepticism and open-mindedness like you gotta you gotta you gotta be able to play upon both and also like take into consideration all of your your fucking biases that are going to be like like somebody might be playing upon maybe you really always wanted to be an athlete and they're like you know you're not fulfilling your true quest because you're working at mcdonald's right now it's like you're right. You know what? I, I, you're right. I'm not. I'm not fulfilling my true quest. And it's like, I think you might actually be an athlete. And it's like you're wearing like a shirt like soccer is life mm-hmm. or something like that. It's like, oh, okay. I think. I think. I think they're right. You know, they're right. I'm gonna start training again. I think I might actually. I think a pro soccer player is in my future. Maybe it reaffirms what we already know about ourselves. Like maybe like that's like in the back of our head. Like maybe we know like. We should go this way. I guess I go back. That goes back to like being intuitive and stuff. Like maybe it just kind of like brings up an idea. I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like it like brings up an idea and like we already think that, but like it brings it to the, like the conscious part of our brain, like the tip of the iceberg, and like then we're able to like dissect it and think about it. But yeah. Wait, bringing one exactly? Like a desire or a thought, or like maybe a truth to our life, like. We know deep down that we should leave that toxic relationship, but like we don't because we don't want to. But like when like that's brought, I don't know. That's like that's a theory. I don't really know if I think that or not. But mm. like like maybe that brings it to like the forefront of your brain. Then you're like, yeah, like I I need to. I don't know if it like resonates with you. I feel like that means it means something. So if it resonates, like if you're not blindly following things, but if you're like it resonates with what you think, I feel like that says something about the situation so going back to what kind of what i was saying earlier do you think they're trained to like push upon what resonates with you and what doesn't I don't know, whether like, it be positive or negative because if it's getting a response out of you then they're kind of doing their job in a way so is it manipulation or is it like actual like intuition i don't freaking know. i bet it's both i bet it's both i bet it's depending on the individual i bet it's some people that think they have a gift i bet it's some people that know they're full of shit some people that have convinced like they know they're full of shit deep down, but they also like they've convinced themselves that they are actually intuitive. And then I bet there are people that actually have some form of a gift. To what degree is it humanly possible to like prognosticate somebody else's future or like to to read somebody and to make predictions about them or to read somebody and make discoveries about them? Because I've heard of some crazy shit happening with like psychics and whatnot. Mm-hmm. too so i i don't know what i think i really don't know 
and you know with social media and everything like everyone's like oh this is authentic this is authentic I'm just being my authentic self and I'm like but are you like what's really being your authentic self uh-huh. you know like what's really it you know I, kind of uh, acting acting in a way that you've prepared and strategized a way that you're going to be perceived yeah through like the masses yeah that's kind of like creating a persona right it, it, it okay you're trying to be authentically yourself the the self that you've that you want to be though uh-huh. you know and the the self that you think you are which may not even be that you may not even be that person i don't know Absolutely. I mean, it's a circle. Who knows? I mean, it's never, you know, it's never going to be solved. It's never going to be, you know, this concrete thing. It's all just, you know, subjective, but it's weird to think about. I think some of the people who put the most time and effort into those personas on social media in person, whenever you actually like get up close, talk to those people, a lot of the time they resemble a robot more than like (laughs) anybody else, you know, like the people with a lot of followers who like... You can tell they put some effort into how, what their image is, what their online yeah. image is. Yeah. But their personality, it's a robot. <laughs> I don't know, but you just asked. You asked. What, yeah, what did you just say? You said, there ain't, ain't no, no laws, laws when, when you're, you're drinking, drinking claws. claws. That's just, <laughs> yeah, ain't no laws. <laughs> That's funny. Sounds like a water droplet. <laughs> Sounds like the intro for a commercial. Ain't no laws, baby. Ain't no laws. I'm insecure about the sounds I can make my, with my I mouth. I know I can't I do like the. I can't do the. I feel like everybody can make cooler sounds with their mouth. I can't do it. Here. I just. I can do this, but it's really loud. I'm moving my mic away. <laughs> I can do that. That's Again, just concerning. Sorry to one up you guys. I mean, it, it's just something that I can do. <laughs> so fun. <laughs> okay, we need it. Name of this podcast uh. is going to be Squirt and Face Stuff. <laughs> <laughs> he uh we would always get drunk and like hammered and talk politics and so then one night like we're drunk again and he just he looks at me he's like what if we were to do this with a bunch of people and just put a mic in front of them and i was like holy fuck like if i were to get you know three conservatives or two conservatives two liberals and two moderates mm-hmm. and ask them questions on politics and get them drunk a shit ton of people would listen to that so then uh it started out as controversial now it's kind of moved into more like funny random questions like is water wet where it's less controversial and more like i mean people still get mad i still had someone throw a chair into a wall over a question of is a hot dog a sandwich i still have that <laughs> but like they threw a oh, chair they, into a wall this dude stood up and just <laughs> i did you can't see but dude this dude launched a chair because he was pissed <laughs> at what people were saying yeah i had it on the sports episode too same guy did it but i mean if you keep a good mindset and you keep yourself in a positive like you know a positive personality you always put on a positive personality you will attract positivity with that law of attraction if you think it you do it you live it and that's what the documentary and the book, The Secret, was kind of about. You, you think on things, you meditate, and even you can, if you can, dream about it. And it will hopefully come to you. And it doesn't work 100% of the time. It's not you know, foolproof or perfect. Mm-hmm. There's all sorts of variables that we don't understand, which, I mean, they've always said that magic is science we don't yet understand. And some people might think, oh, if you think about something and it pops up, it's magic. It's really just science we don't understand. Hence, I like that. Magic is science we don't understand. Hence, metaphysics. It's still a part of physics. 
It's just meta. It's, con it's part of the whole universe that we don't fully understand yet. I mean... That's, I like how you said that, like you you want to make actions towards that because I've seen the secret the documentary it came out in like oh three is that right yeah a long time ago and I really ago. I really loved the concept like it was really inspiring I remember it was. like post watching it I was like this is this is really interesting to me this is really interesting but it almost sounded a little too good to be true and almost right. like a fantasy but I don't I don't think. I'm too open to the idea to just rule it out completely and be like, that's bullshit. Because I know a lot of people that are very hypercritical of it. Like, I've listened to podcasts where they're very critical of The Secret, and I've, listened, like, I've talked to people about it. And they're very quick to judge and say it's bullshit. But I, I don't know if I would agree with that, but I think there needs some plan of action. And who knows if your thoughts aren't helping. If you're not reshifting your focus to whatever that goal may be. Well, it's kind of like the whole issue with the, the power of prayer. People say, oh, if you pray and you think about something, it'll just happen. Well, if you pray, it does not guarantee to happen. But if they say if you meet the universe, or I'll, I'll use the word universe instead of God. I don't like using the word God that often because it has kind of a religious, loaded definition to it. So the universe itself will meet it, meet you halfway if you take action. If you think about it, you visualize it and you take action towards that outcome, that solution, mm. it may happen if it's favorable. But if you just sit back and pray, it can happen too. I mean, it's not guaranteed. It's not it, – it's a really big idea. That's, well, that's probably why people attack it because it's a big idea that not everybody can just accept. It kind of falls in the same line with, like, prayer or meditations, or, or like the, the Buddhistic chants, or tribalistic, you know, rain dances. Rain dancing is a good example of the power of attraction. If you get a whole tribe of people doing a rain dance, and suddenly it starts raining, did it rain because it was already about to rain, or did it rain because they rain danced? You could speculate on that all day. All day long. But there have been studied group meditations um, in large cities that were focused on reducing crime rate and there was a consistent correlation between these group meditations and the reduction of crime rate. Really? Yeah, it would drop by 20 to 30 percent almost. Ooh. Excuse me. Almost every time. Not exactly every time. Sometimes it would go up, but more often it would at least slump. How sustainable was that? Like, if you were to, if this group meditation were to occur one time on a Wednesday, like how long after would the crime rate kind of stay lower? As far as I read into it and have have looked into it, it's it lasted for the day of, like within the time frame that it was happening, and possibly some time after. Um, but I don't know if that would last throughout the entire day and a half, two days, or three days. I think you'd have to have a group constantly meditating on it. Or if you just have people stay in a good mindset constantly, you can do a living meditation. And people could always be meditating, which that's what Buddhists strive for is living meditation. It's continuing to be in a meditative state as they live. Almost implying like a higher s elevated sense of consciousness yeah, while well, you're just being going throughout your daily routine? What you might call enlightenment or ascension. Nirvana. Something yeah, something of that sort. They just they strive for peace. When people think of meditation, they think of not thinking of anything, just having a totally blank mind. But that's not true. Meditation is thinking of nothing in particular. You'll have thoughts run through your mind no matter what. It's just not about you can't cling on to those thoughts. You can't just hang on to that thought and let it roll into other thoughts and continue that line of the thoughts you're having it's about just letting it go and letting other thoughts flow in and out in and out which bruce lee talked about this as well you have to let yourself be like water let the energy flow through you you can't just stop it and try to hold on to that river you have to let it flow and that's what meditation is is letting your thoughts flow so a lot of it almost goes back to like attachment yes like the i'm i'm i don't want to throw any uh I don't want to clutter that word of attachment, but like almost the Buddhist interpretation of attachment mm -hmm. of, of, but like almost like mentally, like cognitively, like your thoughts going in and out of your consciousness mm -hmm. and holding on to those ideas, those concepts. How does that, how does that tie in? Well, 
you have to try to like you can't like force thoughts you can't force positive thoughts but you have to look at maybe where those thoughts are coming from like get more you, aware yeah aware of your thoughts you have to be aware of where they're coming from and what caused them either your previous experience or just that day's experience if you're meditating and you start thinking oh man this sucks or oh i hate this per- this person or i want this to happen you might try to think back well why do i want this to happen why do i hate that person why do i this or why do i that you have to become aware of why you're trying to think that what intention you have when you think that and where that possible train of thought can lead if you follow through with action you want to follow through with the positive things let go of the negative don't hold on to the positive but try to follow through with it in your waking life the sequin jacket Still need to know how I, how you got that. Okay, so transition over like pretty much fast forward. We finished that semester, all those problems that were occurring. Uh, we go back home to we're we're all back in our hometowns. He's still down in Springfield, and I guess he things got a little bit like heavier or something like that at, at some point in time. I guess he was moving like more weight than he even was during the semester. But at the very end of the semester, there was like a there was construction going on right outside our house, and that kind of segues into what I'm gonna say. But I didn't think too much of the construction. Why would you? Right. But my roommate was like, or somebody said to me, they're like, "What the fuck did they really fix?" And so fast forward to hello. Sorry to interrupt. Real quick, Lucy just wanted to say hi to David. Hi. That's it. I need to do. How you doing, Lucy? Like, give me a hug. You too, Lucy. Lucy, just do. Oh, thank you. I'm so sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> <This jacket. laughs> thank nice. you. Yeah. I'm telling the story of how I got it, actually. Oh my God. Is it a good one? I'd say so. It's a sad story. Well, I'm getting to that part. It's a it's a sad story so far. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert. He gets the jacket. Hey, Sam. Have a good night. All right, so fast forward to I think it was like December 12th, something like that. His girlfriend, because we weren't able to communicate with him directly, he would kind of just ghost us. And his, so his girlfriend's texting us, why are the dishes not done? You guys are slobs. You guys are – and we're like, what? We haven't been there like two weeks. Like why is this our problem? Right. And so she's trying to like blame all these problems on us. And long story short, they're really – like he was the cause of the dishes but wouldn't accept responsibility. So – I'm seeing a pattern here with this guy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> a lot a lot of lack of responsibility, like a, a ton. But, uh, yeah, so fast forward. Or later that night, I so I'm, I'm in this group chat, and she's bitching at us. Why are the dishes not done? Why is this not done? Why is this so dirty? You guys are disgusting, blaming all of his problems on us. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, this is ridiculous. And I was doing jujitsu and boxing classes at the time, so I'm like, yo, I'm going to boxing class. Like, see you later, pretty much. I get out of that class and I I think I think I got a shower in and then like 20 minutes later calls just start pouring in from this person from this person from this person from this person and all these people don't know me like they're all I know them all from down here but I know them all from like different social ties I guess you'd say mm-hmm. so I'm like confused and I I call one of them back and they're like Jordan why are there people standing outside your house with AK-47s? I'm like, what do you mean? They're like, yeah, these are like DEA agents or FBI agents or some form of police. And they are standing outside your house with like big guns. And I was like, what? Long story short, our house got raided by either the DEA, the FBI, or somebody related to that. They would like shoot flashbangs in through our windows. My roommate literally had like a a hole in his wall from one of the flashbangs and um all our windows got shattered it caused like eight thousand dollars in damage Damn. and long story short he moved out after that and he well he was he was arrested for like a day and then he got out and i think he he may or may not have charges pressed on him now i don't know but him and doriel green beckham they both were like doing their thing in our house and got a lot of trouble and then we were on tmz for it because doriel green beckham was involved in it who's an ex-nfl player so our house was on tmz for like a drug raid that's and we're like cool but sad. what yeah it's a crazy story but like it sucked to live through 
yeah that's cool to connect with creatives too yeah they're weird and fun absolutely yeah I feel like whenever you're very uh because I consider myself like relatively creative and I feel like whenever you're not creative it's sometimes people consider you like a little wacky have you ever met somebody who's very by the books very logical thinkers I feel like they're they have a difficult time understanding the value that creative people bring yeah uh, yeah, you have as a creative, you really do. You're more open. I think you you're looking for inspiration, and so your your mind is more open to new ideas and new ways of thinking and all that. Absolutely. There apparently, and I need to learn this guy's name because I brought him up on another podcast. But this there is like there. I think there are about two individuals that are worth like multi millions like multi millions they might even be billionaires these guys are worth a fat check like a fat (laughs) check and they've written songs for like major it's like two people like two people majority of pop artists and if you really think about it like taylor swift she's a brand she's Mm -hmm. a brand like who she is she's a brand she's the singer she's the one in the music videos but how many other people are going into her music you know, I mean, like, obviously, it, it makes sense to me. It's not the most, like, esoteric thought to think Kate, or, uh, Taylor Swift is filming this music video. And she needs, like, a camera crew. She needs, like, a makeup artist. She needs somebody on stage that's going to maybe, like, set the stage. She needs, like, a lot of people to perform the actual music video. But how many people are going into her writing like the writing of the lyrics how many people are going into the production it's quality like her face is on it but like is that her expression no like she's probably getting the largest percentage of the taylor swift brand but like how much taylor is in taylor exactly it's not all taylor and that's that's the thing about pop music i feel like if you want to go pop you got to lose a little bit of what you actually want to go see halsey have you, do you have listened to halsey that i don't feel like she's lost that no, that's I the thing like, about Halsey. I feel like she's kept it. Um, I'd like to know what her sign is, actually. I feel like Khalid's kind of that way, too. Khalid is that way. Like, there's like they're, like, like, more real. Chance is kind of pop. They kind of keep their, like, their vibe and their aesthetic going. Like, I don't feel like Katy Perry, Lady Gaga, Kesha. Kesha definitely lost it. Uh, Taylor Swift. Like, all these people. I, they're so fucking mainstream Because we think me. about it, like, their first album that comes out, like, yeah, of course people change over time. Like, your music taste is going to change. But, like, I feel like that first album, like, kind of expresses, like, what you were thinking about inside at the time. Because, like, that was before there was a – maybe there was a producer. But, like, well, let's say there wasn't – like, Taylor Swift's first album, for example. Like, there was a producer. But, like, it was, like, her wrote – she wrote – her wrote those songs. She wrote mm. those songs. And, like, that was how her brain thought. And that was the music that she wanted to go with it. And it's, like, now, like – it's still her, but, like, that's not her, th- like, maybe it's her thoughts, but, like, those aren't her, like, pure thoughts, and, like, same with, like, first album of, like, Lil Wayne or something, like, that's how he thought, that's how his music came out, but, like, now it's not that way, and, like, it's not, doesn't mean it's bad, it just means that, like, that's not their authentic, like, how their brain, like, naturally works, so, like, that's why I, like, really respect artists who, like, like, I don't know, of course Halsey has, like, her you know her crew or whatever but i think it's interesting that she like writes about like the same subject and like she kind of like transforms each song into like a different thing and she'll like talk about her emotions too like she'll be able to relate song i don't know it's very interesting to me 